All right, so we are in going into the cooler greenhouse now where all the anthuriums are. Dear plant lovers, welcome to Thai Exotic Greenery. In this episode, we discuss a broad spectrum of subjects such as plant care, operations, market demand, hybridization, tissue culture, rare plant hunting, and collecting. Throughout this tour, we meet some insanely rare plants that are not even for sale yet. I want to thank our host, Por, for answering my copious questions diligently, as well as our cameraman and my dear friend, Mark. Thai Exotic Greenery is a family-owned nursery in Thailand with insanely large growing facilities focusing on rare aeroids. It is difficult to imagine that just four years ago, these sprawling facilities grew only orchids. We spent some time discussing anthuriums, which is hands down the most sought after genus in the plant trade today. Por shares his gorgeous, diverse and ambitious anthurium collection that he has gathered from all over the world, ranging from dark leafed to variegated and mint anthuriums. We look at his hybrid efforts as well as plans to mass produce these rare anthuriums so they become affordable for collectors like ourselves. In the middle of the episode, we obsess over many forms of philodendron gloriosum that he has collected throughout the world. Now, I do get a lot of messages asking for reputable sources in Asia to purchase plants. I implore you to check out my previous nursery and tour videos of many wonderful nurseries that I've visited in Indonesia and in Thailand. But in this episode, you will see firsthand the level of stock commitment, quality, professionalism, and passion that Thai Exotic Greenery exhibits. Should you decide to make a purchase, Thai Exotic Greenery has given us a 5% discount code SEAN5 or you can click on the website link in the video description down below. Please pardon parts of the episode that was dubbed with voiceovers. This is due to audio malfunctioning during recording. YouTube heavily rewards engagement. Therefore, your likes, comments, and subscription to the channel will help this channel out tremendously. All right, let's end this very long introduction and get started. Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm at Thai Exotic Greenery with Paul, our host for today. So actually, um, we started uh, a bit before COVID, right? And then um, my, my family usually go cut flower orchid. Mm -hmm. And then um, after the COVID hit, right, uh, the, the orchid, cut flower orchid market, I think, um, slowed down a lot. Oh, okay. Yep. That's why we, we try to find something else to, to uh, support our family here. Yes. Yeah, I guess because co cut orchid flower is mostly for commercial, for hotels, yes. malls and everything and during COVID everything kind of yep. went to a standstill. That's amazing. So your parents didn't really do much of these aeroids, these trending tropical plants before. Yep. No. And that was like what, three, four years ago? Ah, uh, yes, I think three years ago. So you and your brother Piao, mm -hmm. you guys were both doing this and you guys were purchasing from everywhere. Tell us some of the interesting places that you purchased from um, or visited. We visited, I think we, we purchased from many, many different um, countries, but I think the, the, the most excited one that we visited is the Ecuador. Okay. What is your most, can I ask you for the top three most exciting purchase you've made? Thing. Putting you on the spot here. <laughs> Let's say um, variegated uh, Laxolian, I think. Okay. And then some other variegated um, both philodendron and alocasia, yes. Okay, from uh, all over? Um, alocasia, I think mostly from Thailand. Okay. Yep. And Antulium, I think mostly from Ecuador. Okay, did plant care come easy for you? Like learning about these plants, how to care for them, how to propagate, and how to sell them. Did it come easy for you or was it? Um, it's, it's not hard for us because um, some of the knowledge is the same as um, uh, orchid. And you have the team from your family that's also hap helping you with packing and everything and it probably have many, many years of experience uh, doing yes. that. Yes, I think we, uh, my, my auntie, my, my family uh, do maybe 20, 30 years of cut flower orchid. Okay. Yeah, but the, the packing is still different, a lot different. Yeah. We, we teach them everything, but they, they are like expert in, in packing, so they learn quite fast about packing the plant. So you're learning on the go, you're learning within like this short period of time to have all these, I mean, we're gonna see the collection later. Yep. It's insanely huge. And also to learn how to export, how to deal with customers from overseas. This is mind blowing. Uh, so what are some of the best selling trending plants right now? 
right now. Yeah. Um, I think it's depend on the market. Um, for for us, I think variegated plant and some of the rare um, green plant also. Yes. Okay. Are anthuriums already like a big market here? Is it doing yep. well? Right now, they they start um, buying more anthurium for the green one first because I think right now the the price of the um, variegated one is um, a, a bit too expensive now. Yeah. For, for some um, player, for some collector, yes. So I guess we'll see some of the collection later because you are also hybridizing yep. and theorem. So we'll see, do you do it yourself or do you have like your staff? Do you teach um, them how to do it? Yes, before I, I did myself, but I think um, later on it's too many. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so uh, we train some, some staff to, to um, pollinate it, yes. Okay, and you also have a bit of variegated anthuriums here as well. Yes. But then, they, they are not really produced in such a large quantity enough to really sell them in a, in a meaningful way. Yes. So you guys are still trying to grow them out and, mm -hmm. and, and wait for the market to be ready. Uh, so actually, if you do variegated antulium, maybe you get, um, depend on the species, right? Mm -hmm. Some maybe you get a lot of seed, mm -hmm. but uh, if you grow them out, maybe a few is good variegation. Mm. It's not all of them is good variegation. Yeah. Even the matter is variegated. Yeah, and you can still see later that some of the variegation actually have surprising colors. Some of them are a bit more pink, some are orange, some are yellow, some are more white. Yes. And we also saw a green on green one that's actually quite cute uh, yes. earlier on. And also mint one. Yeah. So right now we, we try to make um, new things for the market. Yeah, and this is actually why I chose to come to them for a content because they're so aggressive with collecting, hybridizing, with being, not to follow the trend, but to kind of set the trend to, to be the trend so it's in, it's interesting to see some, some of the things that they are doing okay so you guys know that Sharonia is one of my favorite plants and this is my first time seeing one this is the variegated philodendron Sharonia oh there's two of them my gosh and the variegation is so beautiful oh my gosh look at that this, this is like sectoral variegation Oh my gosh, and Sharonia eyes, just so you guys know, they get huge. This is still a, a tiny plant. Do you have the large one yet already? Or uh, yeah. no. For the way get that, not yet. Okay. This one uh, really new to the market. Because this is very, very, very rare. I don't, I cannot name five people that actually have this plant. So <laughs> yeah, be on the lookout for this. But Sharonia is actually quite easy to grow yes. and they can grow large quite uh, relatively fast. So this is one to look out for, for you guys who are following the variegated aeroid market. Uh, this is um, Parodias uh, variegated. This one, I think, Aurea, yellow one. Okay. And then I got white one and mint one also. So white this one. is the white variegated. Beautiful. Interesting, even the green form is already peculiar. It's crazy that you have the variegated ones of these. Yeah. All right, let me zoom in. My gosh, okay, I'm not really going to touch that leaf, but here, if you see, this is actually really beautiful, the mint. As of filming now, the supply for some of these interesting philodendrons is still low for yes. the supply. Oh, so this is a Pentagonia Wenlandii. Tell us more about this. I think this is from seed, because usually the way they, they produce the, the um, Pentagonia is by making seed. Mm -hmm. And the, the mother pen is really big. Okay. And from what I heard, this kind of pen you can eat the food also. Interesting. And this is, you said, a dark form and variegated. Yes, this one is without um, variegated, uh, mm -hmm. but the, the leaf is still really black and the yeah. late vein and, yeah. and the laid back. Oh my god, this is beautiful. Yes, some of them are green, but this one are dark combining with uh, variegated to get this wonderful pink color. Can you tell us where you found this or is it a secret? This is from um, Ecuador also. From Ecuador? Yep. My gosh, definitely one of a kind. This is beautiful. Wow. So, Por, any advice for new business owners if they're thinking about starting a business? <laughs> I think um, the pen business is still going, but not um, like blooming like uh, before the COVID. Yeah. But it's still like a um, good business and ongoing business. Okay. Yep. Interesting. So, uh, I do have many people reach out to me. They're opening plant shops all around the world and they're looking for supply. So obviously you do B2B, you do supply to businesses. Uh, yes, we do both B2B and B2C, yes. Okay, so reach out to Paul if you have any, again, I'm gonna put the link of the website <laughs> and yeah, reach out if you have any questions. Yep. Say it. So this is an Anthurium and this really caught my eye. It's a forget EI hybrid. And this one actually caught my eye, not because of the, I mean, this is gorgeous, but look at the back. 
Wow, look at that. That's a, it's a party going on in the back. It's amazing. So this is from Indonesia. Obviously, I know that you trade a lot with Indonesia because you do visit us sometimes. Ah, yes, yes. Thank you for your business. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're in a room that the Thai people here call EVAP system. Yep. So it is, uh, maybe you can explain a little bit. It's a um, clean house that um, they got um, what they call cooling pad mm -hmm. that the water run down. Yeah. And then um, the, the wind passed through the, the cooling pad, mm -hmm. that water run down, right? And yeah. they got a lot of humidity and then uh, they cool, cool the, the, the greenhouse of it. About, it depends with our chiller, maybe one or two or three degrees Celsius. Okay. But with chiller, you can set it into extreme, like maybe seven, five to seven degrees lower. But okay. it costs you a lot of electricity. <laughs> And you mentioned that this is automated somehow, like they, they know uh, when it's hot or when it's yes. cold. This. So actually they got sensor over there mm. to, to um, that, that small thing. On. Wait, that, that little thing is a sensor? Yep. It's oh a my sensor. gosh. Okay, so the plants are depending on this little thing <laughs> for temperature regulation. In the next segment, we will resort to voiceover due to technical difficulties during recording. We will be looking at fabulous Anthurium collections. Now Poor has sectioned them off by type. Here we have the corrugated leaf anthuriums and back there we have large bird nest anthuriums. These are all mother plants that are being hybridized or being pollinated. That's the heart-shaped leaf anthuriums hanging out together. This is such a neat way of organizing them. And then there you have the dark leaf anthuriums and I know that it doesn't look so dark on the screen but believe me in person it looks jet black. Look at how stunning this actually is. And to the right we have some variegated anthuriums. And here you can see that all these plants are heavily pregnant. These guys have been busy hybridizing these anthuriums. I innocently asked Por how many hybrids is he making exactly and he has no idea but it's ranging in the hundreds. Now, pollination is just the beginning of the process. When you get hundreds and thousands of seedlings, you're gonna need space to grow them out, to find out their characters, and then to scale them up for sale. And you have no idea how difficult it is to stare at hundreds and thousands of the seedlings to figure out which ones are the winners, which ones are the characters that you adore or what the market might adore. I have tremendous respect for these hybridizers. Poor pointed to this random spedex that's actually a dark phoenix crossed with a luxuriance. Both mother plants are actually incredibly rare. I can't wait to see what grow out of this. Now moving on to the variegated anthuriums. This is the variegated papillilaminum. Now it's not clear whether this is a pure species or a hybrid. Sometimes the variegated ones have to be crossed with a variegated to produce variegated seedlings. This one is already heavily pregnant. As you can see, it's got seeds coming along the way. And this particular plant has been hybridized with the red dark phoenix. Now, when you hybridize a variegated anthurium with a dark leafed anthurium, you can produce some interesting offsprings. They could produce either reddish or purple or even orange variegation. I've covered this topic extensively in my tour video with Eddie Pranoto, which I'm going to link up above. So this here, you said this is one of your crazier purchases. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Look at that. This is the variegated anthurium luxuriance. This is stunning. Uh, how did you feel when you were buying this? Were you scared, nervous? <laughs> um, it's okay for us because we try to um, make um, new thing um, and then uh, maybe if we make um, quite few then maybe um, we can sell them more affordable okay maybe <laughs> so you want you do want the customer to be able to achieve uh, to be able to attain some of these plants yes. without it being crazy exorbitant expensive yes. that's that's really kind and uh, then, this is uh, I think like white or mint one okay and then I think I got other one this is yellow one what? Oh my gosh. So they're not the same plant? No. They're coming from different. different. See, this is also different. So they come from different parents, different uh, different variegations. Yep. Genetics. I variegated. Okay. Oh, look at how bright uh, orange that is. This is really, can we see the mint ones? Is this the mint? Yes, this is the mint one. Could, be, could this be the same one I saw at the show last <laughs> time? Maybe. Did you sell it? Did you manage to sell the one that we showed? It was a little one before, like 
puppy mint or which one? I can't remember. Yeah, this one also mint. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. But different. Uh, different types. Wow, yeah, so these are pretty much not ready unless you have a really, really big budget you're willing to... Uh, this one, um, I think most of them is not for sale anymore. Yeah. We try to uh, make more seeds and then uh, sell them more cheaper. Yeah, yes. because this is really ridiculous. You guys bought these for a very, very high price. Yes, yes. Can I ask you, maybe this is a secret question, so I might edit it out later in, in case. Have you guys turned a profit yet? Just yes or no? Uh, for Ed Julian, I think no. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> because I think we collect um, a lot, a lot wow, of... look at that. Um, and are you guys still buying more or are you yeah, done? Still. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> so this is a Clarinervium, variegated. Beautiful. And this is from Indonesia, maybe? We have so many Clarinerviums in Indonesia. From Thailand. From Thailand, I yep, see. This one from Thailand. And then um, really hard to get the seed out of Kalinavium. Okay. Take long, long time to get seed. Okay. And then sometimes it's not um, fully um, like fertile. Okay. Only okay. two seed from the whole. Oh no. Flower is not good yet. And the baby may not even be variegated from yes. the two, so it's a risk. Okay. But this is heavily. F this is very naughty. It's like flowering like crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So then take off the the flowers. Variegated. Okay, so when the spadex is variegated like this, you have a higher chance of variegated seeds, correct? Yep. But if the spadex has less variegation, like it will have less chance. Is that correct? Or yes. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I can't believe you've only done this for like. I mean, anthuriums were only like what one plus years, a bit, and you've already grown so, so much. This is crazy. Forgetii crossed with vechii. Yeah, you can see the ribbing from the vechii. That's what they told us. But I think yes, from from all the characteristic, it should be for get the eye by Vichy eye. It looks like the animal, the uh, the blue crab or whatever they call it. The the it's an animal from the ancient time. Horse it's like crab, isopods. Is that what they call it? Yeah, horseshoe crab, horseshoe not blue crab. crab. Yeah, horseshoe crab. Horseshoe crab. This is what it looks like exactly. Do you know who hybridized this in? in I don't know. This one we imported. Ah, uh, we 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 walk in inside the pen market in. Uh, the plant show in Jakarta, mm. and then I like this one. And then yeah. Bye. Speaking of plant shows, we can find you in most plant shows here in Thailand, uh, and yes. also you're yeah. doing international plant shows. Yes. Um. This year we got um in May we go to Lettland uh, orchid show, uh, in in mid of May, and you... then I think we got the other one in August or something. Eight. Eight okay. one. Also in, in Florida, both of them are in Florida. Okay, so if you live in Florida or if you live in the States and you check out the shows, stop by Paul's booth and tell him you saw this episode. I think we will both be very happy if yes. you do that. So the Anthurium clavigerum, and this is the variegated, the new leaf looks like this. But my gosh, first time seeing this. Can I be honest, like the clavigerum, it's got, um, uh, the young form is so boring when it's small. Yes. And when it gets big, it becomes like, and this is not even the biggest leaf. It can get uh, bigger, bigger. massive, yes. way big. This is the first time seeing the variegated. Now, if you want the green form, they're actually quite affordable now because they're actually quite fast growing, quite easy to propagate. Yep. But to get one a mature size, it takes time and skill. But to get, this is the first time I'm seeing this variegated one. This is insane. This is crazy. This, this kind of end to them is a lot easier to propagate. Yeah. Because it's uh, tailing. Yeah, it's almost like a monstera or a philodendron the way it's growing. So this is why I, I, the green ones, it hit the market, but very quickly the prices stabilized now. And this variegated is, is crazy. <laughs> Driving me crazy. This is a green on green alocasia... Portii. Portii. Actually, this one is yellow. Yellow? Oh, yeah, but um, if you go alocasia... Um, with uh, a lot of shading, right? Mm -hmm. the, the color of the yellow one tend to turn to this color. Oh, okay. So right now, the, the market for this one go up also. This is the bird nest, but this is the white uh, mint color. Mm. And this one is the pink color one. Okay. This one is what they sought after in in the market now, the pink color. How many eye? Okay. But the variegation is different. Oh yeah, this is orange almost, yeah? Yeah, uh, this one yellow. Yellow. Yeah. 
It's like a mustard yellow, which is interesting. Yes, yes, yes. And the vein on this, this is really, really incredible. But you need a huge space to grow this because they, they need space yes, to this spread was, out. Um, uh, Asia, Asian uh, been like this kind of plant for 20, 30 years yeah. because they are good for landscaping. Okay, even though they originate from South America, these Yes, plants. but uh, they are bred in Asia. Yeah. Do you see a lot of these variegated plants coming from South America? No. Okay. Interesting, huh? How that happens. Yes. From seed. Okay. And then uh, we name with our company name. Before they got three, three color in, in one um, leaf. Yeah. Do every leaf look like this gorgeous or is it just the one spectacular leaf that we're looking at now? I think all of them look maybe the same. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. But this is not the white monster because no. it looks different. Yes, it's not white monster. It's got a lot of veins. It's got more chlorophyll than the white monster. Uh, yep, maybe. I, I, I don't know much about white monster. <laughs> okay. But the, the color of the three, three color in one leaf, the, the green one, the um, like um, green mint, yeah. and then the more mint, mint one. And then this is coming from the more mint node maybe, that's why it looks like yes. this. Yes. You did mention this in our show, I remember that now. Yes. We, we did talk about this, but it's come up with some interesting babies then. Mm, beautiful. But different pattern. Yeah, because uh, it depends on the node that uh, they hit the fully white one, hit yeah. the partial green one or the total green one. Yeah, yeah this because look at the, the node here, the, the stem is like beautifully variegated. That's why you have, this is good genetics. Yep. That's why you have such a variable but stable variegation but varied uh, in their variegation. This is cool. Uh, into more um, white color node. But you say, what are you naming this again? Pi X. X. Yes, Thai, so the greenery. One new. Oh my gosh. This is what, uh, which alocasia is this? Uh, Lao Tzu Oh my this gosh. This one is um, yellow color olea. Yeah, and it's beautiful. Lao Tzu Bakiana, when they grow big, it's like a sword. Back to the voiceover, we are looking at the Monstera Deliciosa Mint Tissue Culture. Now, this is not the Borzigiana, which means that the leaves can get rather huge. And it's mint. My gosh, and these are coming in hot from tissue culture, so do check back the website. Sometimes they have them in stock. This one here is an Alocasia Dragon Scale Variegated. This is so stunning. Now, Thai people really, really love their variegated Alocasias. Unfortunately, they're not a big thing in Indonesia. Not many people are looking for them. So you can find some really cool variegated Alocasias from Thai sellers. And next up, we have the very common Alocasia Amazonica that is Aurea, which is yellow variegation and splash. This is blowing my mind because this plant can get rather huge. I can't wait to see what this plant looks like when it's larger. All right, so we're in your mom's greenhouse. Yes. I see a lot of philodendron gloriosums here. Mm -hmm. And you were just saying, how many of these greenhouses do you have? Uh, like this, maybe four. Four of these. Yes, this is the smallest one. <gasps> <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay. And really quickly, I see Syngoniums, Aglonemas. Yep. This Aglo one, um, we grow them in moss uh, and we'll uh, be ready to ship to export with rooted. Ah. ah, you can look. Come, come, yeah, yeah. i show you. Like this. This is yeah. with rooted and then this go inside moss. Yeah. And then we can just remove this and then ship it. wash a bit and then we ship the whole. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. This is all ready to export. Yeah. And from where I'm standing now, I cannot even see the end of the greenhouse. <laughs> I cannot see it. It's okay, we walk, uh, we walk to... Yeah. Is this purchase orders or are these like from stock? Uh, this is, um, we prepare this for uh, late land. Late land or Kicho. Okay. Next month in next two months. Interesting. So these are going to the US. Yep. Interesting. Strawberry shape. Um, yes. Philodendron white. No uh, wizard? White princess. Princess. Orange princess. Yeah, that's me. Um, Agonima My Thai favorite. Color. Yeah, I love this. Yep, and then some Epipemnam, yeah. Kingnatam, some Piper. Yes. Oh, this is uh, quite new in, in cultivation. Yep. Piper, where we get it? This is beautiful. Piper SP. This is really stunning. 
This is Rafido Fora. Mm. Then some this Akuminata. This is Akuminata, not Adansonia. No, see the the manifest is different. The whole. Oh my gosh! Yeah. This yeah. one Akuminata. This one Adansoni. Yeah. Wait, okay, this is all going there as well to the show. Yep. Wow, look at all this. Uh, you have your bro mark. This is um, Cebu. Cebu, where you get it. Oh my gosh, a lot of cool plants uh, yeah. are coming. Can people buy online for the event? Yep. There, there's option now in our website to um, actually pick up in, in the Lateland Orchid Show. Okay. Yep. Interesting. Available option in, inside our website now. Philodendron this, Jupiter. this is also going to the yep. States. You have a lot going there. Is it a. Uh, you guys have a huge booth? Um. Half ten, I think half ten. This is a lot of stock. Yep, and I there's some you... Lechuliana. Yeah. Esqualetto. People like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mostella Esqualetto. This is still a baby, actually. They can get huge. Yep. Massive. Well, I hope you sell a lot of these. This is a lot of stock, and they look so happy and healthy. Yep. Yeah. And more gloriosum back there. It's just around us. So, you want to walk us quickly through yep. some of the forms? I missed the pink back one. Yeah. The one that you showed earlier, yep, right? Yep, and then the white vein is a lot of veining. But yeah. the... So the shape of the leaf is different. See, this one a bit more narrow and then the line is different. Yeah. Each of the pen, I think most of them are different. Can they morph in, in, in a different environment? Can they change shape on its own after a while, you think? Uh, if the <laughs> condition is perfect for the pen, right? Yeah. The pen will show the, 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 their form in nature. Yeah. So I think... This go all of this in the same environment, mm -hmm. but look different. That means the pen is different. Okay. It's not uh, depend on environment. Yeah. Yep. They look so gorgeous in a whole bed like this. Imagine playing hide and seek here. You'll never <laughs> find the person. Because <laughs> it's yep. Like lollipop. Yeah. Really pink. So you don't have a name for this particular one, do you? No, we don't name it. No. Okay. Because too many. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I Palmini I Silver, um, Sodilo FF, okay. SP Columbia. Be careful. So they're all kind of mixed in here. Yep. In this bed. I think philodendron flowers are going to become a thing now because our, our collection is getting more mature. So we are seeing a lot of people. So uh, this one is ready for pollination because nice. the, the, see the, the flower is all open. Yeah. Below also. See, if you touch the, you use your finger to yeah. touch inside here. Yeah. It's sticky. Oh yeah. Ooh, yep. <laughs> this one is ready for the pollen to. If you put pollen here, you get philodendron hybrid. Okay. Yep. So it's female face first. The female. No. Face first. Different from antulium. Antulium is both uh, male and female on the same thing, right? Yeah. But this one, the female part is below. Ah. Uh, and then the pollen is on the top. Portion. Yep. But which come first? Uh, the water, the female part. Female part, okay. And then the pollen come later. Here. Yeah. But they also have a shorter, narrow, um, narrower window where you can pollinate them, right? Yes, like shorter. But you can still cut the. Oh, you can cut it off and and do and keep it. Yep. Interesting. Beautiful. And you're growing way more uh, gloriosums than these guys. So are, are they are gloriosums better at selling? Do you think? Or? Yes. Uh, so right now, some some landscaper mm -hmm. uh, use some to do landscape in Thailand. Nice. Yeah, because the price is more affordable now, so they and the size is very big and easy to take care in Thailand. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Nice. So why are these guys here? They are a bit. They are trying to get them to be more mature. Is that what? Yeah. This is uh, the mother plant. Or all, all the oh, one yeah. you see, right? Because you make cuts here. Yep. Or all, all you see here, that is not in the pot, it's mother plant and then yeah. the plant go out and then we cut and pot them here. Into like everywhere, this. right? Yeah. Yep. Wow, so these guys are hard at work producing a lot of... Uh, offspring. <laughs> offspring. <laughs> a lot of cutting is mostly from, yeah. from this. But uh, the condition now is not so good because it's quite really hot in Thailand now. Yeah, we're in filming in April. It's the hottest part. You yep, the see month. the leaf is um, yellow because very hot. Oh my god, <laughs> look at that. Ugh. You know why hot and then they got flower? The why? flower is uh, to produce them from dying. dying. Yeah, sometimes to reproduce. Yeah. Uh, a lot of heat stress, that's why uh, the flower come out. I thought uh, philodendrons, they flower when it's cool as well. Uh, 
who is uh, when they ready to flower. Okay. But when they um, got stressed, yeah. they have to find a way to survive. reproduce to survive. Yes, that's oh, yeah. why they produce the flower. Interesting. But you have to pollinate by hand because they you, they cannot naturally pollinate them here. Um. Yes. Harder for philodendron. Yeah. That is beautiful as well. Sometimes we forget how beautiful the philodendrons are. This one is the Palmini. Yep. Classic. They used to be so popular, but I think everybody who wants it has gotten it. Yep. And these days, um, not many people mention it anymore, but it is so beautiful. Still really you know. nice. One of the nice plants. Yeah. So oh, calling me out. Yeah. Sometimes like you just have the one that really calls out to you. And this one. See. Oh, this is. Oh my gosh. The winning is really like. It's like minty. It I, almost looks like a spider might attack, but I know it's not because no, it's, it's like not, evenly it's throughout. Beautiful. See? Like this. Okay. Many small veining. Yeah. Yep. And the color is still pink. If you sell these without any name, like are they the same price or are they different prices? Same prices. What? Yep. But you cannot choose the form. Okay. So yep. like you won't get a hundred people DMing you after this video asking you if they <laughs> you could pick out a certain Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we sell them, but um, see, this one really nice. The vending. Yeah. It's all of them is different. Yeah. So it's quite a surprise when you have them and, and you're looking at the new leaves. Uh, you yep. just don't know what you're going to get sometimes. The pink. Oh yeah, it's very electric flying. Yep, very outside electric. from the main, main, main vein. Mm. Many different kinds. And this one, so the leaves feel a bit thinner than the others. Uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, a little yes. bit thinner. This goes on and on. This is really, really stunning. This is the Sodoroy, I think. Brantianum. Oh, Brantianum <gasps> Y form. This is a Brantianum? Yep. This is the one uh, from Ecuador, look like this. This is the also the Ecuador one. I try to find the Thai one. The Thai one, yeah, here. How do you remember? It's a lot more silver. I think this is the one I have. Yeah, this is the more mini. Silver. They call um, Bantiana mini. So actually, it's not mini, but this one take longer time to get big leaves, right? Yeah, yeah. But this one, um, if you uh, got the pole for them, they go into big leaf really fast. Is it because they're more type. green, like chlorophyll, so that they probably can... Maybe, or maybe it depends on their species also. Yeah. Yep. My gosh, we're not even halfway done with this greenhouse. You said this is 10% of the total uh, workable area that you have. Ah, uh, yes. This greenhouse. My gosh. And... Yes, that's some majestic, some Monsela Albo. Yeah. So do you like decide what to uh, propagate and create beforehand? Or do, do they come from the customer's requests already? Um, no, actually we, we, we go to the matter pan and then um, what is ready to cut, we cut, 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 cut. And then um, we put it because they take long time, maybe two, three, four months to get the rooted one and with yeah. all nice leaf. Yeah. We only sell the one with all nice leaf usually. Yeah. So but you have to have the right intuition too. You have to know the market, like what it demands. If you yep. cut the wrong one and you have a lot of stock, then waste of space <laughs> waste of space yes yeah have you made any mistake in that sense like just cutting something and then realizing hey nobody wants this yes plant. yes yes few few plant like and that. then after we know that it didn't sell then we stop cutting but the pen yeah. is still here okay like this see it's fairly long okay yeah. <laughs> but this is the brand brand yeah, yes. Interesting. it's like um really telling and everything you yeah. can cut a lot but uh, the market is, um, we produce enough for the market. Yeah. This is uh, too, too many. That's yeah. why we didn't cut anything. They grow so fast too, yep. animals. They're unstoppable. Esqualetto, here is some of our mother plant. Okay. And then we just cut from here. Yeah. Chop, chop, chop. Nice. Behind is Colocasia. How go. many employees? Like, can I guess like 100? No. <laughs> Like, this is insane. Like, if you know, I think you'd say too few. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you set it up in the way, like this whole thing is designed in a way that these plants can take care of themselves. Yes, just only water. Possible. Yeah. Water and some, um, we put fertilizer and yeah. we spray um, the pesticide, the yeah. fungicide, the, um, I think once a month or something. Yeah. Yep. And the bottom here, can you, this is the first time I've seen like this kind of drip bottoms. 
it's for the excess water to drip down. Yep. But then is there any uh, for humidity or for? Yeah, um, this is uh, before it's the uh, orchid um, orchid garden. Yeah. This is how they usually go orchid. Okay. Uh, here, right? Yeah. And then uh, the orchid is uh, on top yeah. of this. This is how they do usually for orchid, but I think usually ornamental plant they don't go like this. So the roots of the orchid do they go down here? No. Some yes. Some but, can. Uh, usually they they don't because uh, orchid is um, aerial plant, right? Yeah, yeah. They they don't need a lot of uh, like this. They don't need this. Yeah, yeah. They just put in the, the inside the pot with with no no media. So you repurpose a lot of this space from an orchid growing facility into aeroids. Yes. Primarily. This is really interesting. Yeah, and that is probably one, uh, one of the plants that used to be so sought after. And then yep, Palaiso Verde. Yeah, it's beautiful. But it grew so fast that <laughs> it, <laughs> yes, it's hard yes. for, for, for it to maintain the price. Mycans. Yep. But this is some gorgeous, gorgeous mycans. I've yep, corrugated mycan. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Sometimes when I see, I guess they're starting to be propagated more, but the ones I see in the shows are usually the one with very normal variegation. But this is beautiful. Later, this one um, we have to um, propagate more first. Yeah. Because if we sell all the mother plant, uh, the good good one, yeah. then after that we don't have any more to, to produce and to supply. Yeah, so you do select the best ones for, uh, yep. for propagation. Beautiful. Some Hoya variegated. Yeah, hello. Not a lot of Hoya for a nursery this big. This is a very small amount of Yes, uh, uh, we don't do a lot of Hoya. Mostly yeah. um, Synchonium, Moncella, Antulium. Yeah. My gosh, this is huge. Woo! This is huge. Look at that. I can't see the end of that. I don't know where it ends. Uh, there must be about, I don't know, 30, yes, we walk 30 here. rows. It's okay. Yeah. Tree it's King, a... Mew Confetti. But these guys, um, they were, everybody rushed to buy them at some point, but now the prices has got a little bit falling yes. down, right? Falling down, but um, they're still nice for the house plant. Yeah. Yep. This one, uh, we're selling quite cheap now. Yeah. It's okay for the market. Uh, I feel then mm. black cardinal, right? Yep. But uh, we get a mutation into this color without dying. That is crazy. It's like a weird uh, ochre. Is that the right color? It's yes, like, uh, um, yes, I don't know how to describe yeah. this color. But the, the color is stable, yeah? Stable, but they go uh, a lot slower. See, mm. the same batch. Oh. This one, the yeah. green one. Yeah. This one, the, the uh, like a different color one. They from go a lot slower from the same batch. From TC or from seedlings? From TC. Okay, that's interesting. Yep. And I've seen some actually miniature philodendrons that came out of TC as well. I mean, uh, it's really I've seen in Singapore. Maybe. So some interesting mutations can be found in TC. I, this is really cool for people who have like a small space. <laughs> maybe for terrarium too, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't go quite slow, mm. but uh, this color always yeah. look nice. Yeah. Because but, for, uh, for the little terrariums, you want the plants to grow slow. You if know? if you, you put um, the light, right, uh, you go them maybe um, a bit uh, more um, white light. Mm. They change into a bit of pink color, like okay. this. Okay. Possible to get this color, but this one not. Uh, but uh, possible to get this color. We, we managed to go some with this color also. Did you guys name this yet? Uh, I think Golden Cardinal. Golden Cardinal, that's a yeah. good name. Awesome. This is the Clusia Rose. This is all for me. Beautiful. Look at the variegation on these. Stunning. But this is really stunning, my gosh. Okay. So these are all different types of skin dapsis. That's variegated. Je satin albo. Okay. Je satin mabo. Okay. Eh, uh, yeah, I forget Take the name. This. It looks it like a picture. Cam or, or whatever, I forgot the name. This is a tube, eh? Yep. Tube, there is so many types. Lubicon. Mm. Um, From Indonesia, right? Yes. Many different mm. kinds. This one, jet satin. Yellow. Normal one. Normal one. This is the Rafa de Frahai. 
I think Ray, Hai Ray, Ray or Hai Yi? Hai Yi, Lei Yi, um, my, I don't know. Okay. From Indonesia though. Cebu, Cebu Blue, right? Yeah, Cebu Blue variegated. We haven't seen the big one yet, right? I think people are still cutting them up. Monstera Mayuna variegated. Okay. I, we buy it, um, a Achelopia or something, but it's from EU. This one, okay. Adansoni Mint. Okay. Beautiful. But uh, it's SP. SP. This one, uh, like mint color. This one, the pink color. Cute. This one, yellow color. Okay. But they're all still SP, yeah? Yes, this one uh, yellow but with uh, white splash, right? That one yellow but no splash. Okay. All right, folks, that's all the time I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this all the way to the very end. Should you decide to make a purchase at Thai Exotic Greenery on their website, they have kindly given us a 5% discount code. Simply type in Sean5 during checkout, or you can click the link on the website in the video description down below. Thank you, Patreon members, for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus contents for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite-sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTube member of the channel. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month. Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Paul, so tell us some of the countries that you ship to. So, um, Europe, I think most of Europe country we can ship and then US, uh, all mainland and Hawaii and then Canada also and some other place we, we can but uh, if, if uh, they go uh, by air cargo, I think we manage to ship uh, to most of the world but it depends on your um, regulation yeah. on your law that uh, allow us to send or not because some country we, we, we cannot ship them. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, last year we managed to find a way to pack for the winter. Uh, even we sent to um, Canada last year maybe two or three shipments, uh, minus about 13 to 15 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Uh, really cold and the pan is still uh, looking fresh and not, not frozen. Okay. All good. But the best tip for buyers is that it's best to order in spring or fall because summer it can get super hot. I mean, there is a bit of a risk and winter it can get frosted, but of course you guys found a way around it. Yeah. But it's still best to order, let's say right now in spring because this video is coming out in spring. Yeah. So it's best to order now. It's, it's, it's <laughs> also not only about shipping, right? Yeah. It's also about taking care. It's yeah. a lot easier to taking care in, in uh, other season than winter. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and spring is best time because you have really good light and good humidity uh, in summer that you can rehab some of these plants.